And you that are watching by the way of television, YouTube, Internet, Facebook, Instagram, Rooker, whatever, I put a challenge out there this day. That challenge is, is to try God. You may have just turned on that switch. And you may be so far lost and gone that you think there's no hope for you, but I want to tell you today that God is still on the throne. I pointed this out last week. In the book of Acts, there is no amen to the book of Acts. That's the reason why you can still be added to the church. Today is the day that God can take your world and change it and show you how much love He has for you. All you have to do is sit down and write me a letter. Send it to the post office box that's on there. Don't send it to my church. Send it to me. I'll personally read it and pray over it. And I'll tell you right now, I believe that when I pray over it, God hears me and God answers prayer. I don't play games when it comes to prayer. I don't play games when it comes to uh, playing church. I believe if you're sick, the Bible says, call for the elders of the church, anoint their head with oil, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise you up again. If you want God to do something for you, reach out to Him. Reach out and say, Pastor Bob, I happen to tune in your service today, and I believe that you can pray for me, and I believe that God can help me. You don't have to send me no money. If you want to, that's fine. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to see people blessed and healed and delivered. Now is the time. The time for what? The time to get ready? The time to prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord? To examine yourself? To search? To see if you're right with God? To make sure that you're not fall, falling for a false, false doctrine? But you know the truth, and the truth will what? Set you free. If you follow the Spirit of God, it'll never deceive you, and it'll never lead you wrong. The Spirit of God is only for one reason, to let you know that you can bear witness with God, and God bear witness with you. Amen? Amen. So it goes on to say, verse 10, no, wait a minute, let me read the second one. And the day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as moves spread across the mountains and a great people, a strong, there has not been ever since, neither shall be any more after it, even the years of many generations. That tells me that there has to be somebody that God is preparing to blow a trumpet to get His people ready for the soon coming King. And if Jesus was to happen to walk through the door, how would you know that's Jesus? Just because somebody says it's Jesus or they paint a picture to make it look like Jesus. It's not Him. But you'll know Him by the Spirit. And here's how you can determine if you're starting to spiritually grow. You need a gift. It's called discernment. That gift is so important that it will allow you not to be deceived or tricked. You'll know that the discernment works because you'll be in a midst of people and something will compel you to make you feel funny that something ain't right and to get away from whatever that is. Or if you go into a store. I had people, like my son called me just before I got ready to come into church. He said, hey, Dad, you ain't going to believe this. All the stuff that's going on, why not? But anyway, he said, my transmission fell out on the highway. You know what I said? So what? It's not my problem. If you'd have done what I told you, you wouldn't be sitting along the highway. I said, go rent a U-Haul truck and go get you a place. But he was trying to save money. See, I blew the sound. I warned him. I put the trumpet out there. I warned him. But he didn't have ear to hear and he didn't take heed. And we have to take heed to what the Spirit is saying to the church this day. God cannot lie. He will never break a promise to you. And you can stand fast on His Word because His Word is settled forever. But you have to get into that Word and you have to study it to show yourself approved 
a workman that's not rightly dividing the word of truth. God is on the throne watching over his people. And he's got angels out there guarding you. I had somebody the other day ask me a question about how do you know? I said, here and here. And they looked over here and they looked over there. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I have two angels watching over me at all times. Now, some of you don't believe that. But if I went back in my life and I didn't know God a long time and I started telling you some things that happened to me that had to be God be there to save me or watch over me or protect me, even though I was not saved. And you have the same thing that I had. You had protection. It was because maybe your grandma or your great-grandma or your mom or your dad or somebody that really cares for you, loving you, asking for God's protection upon your life to bring you out of the bondages and bring you through the storms. Having somebody that cares. And there's a song that I sing once in a great while. Someone to care, someone to share all of your troubles like no other. He'll come down from heaven and He'll touch you. Every one of you have been touched by God in some shape, form, or fashion. This new year that we're in, and this is our first service for the new year, I did not put prophecies down because I'm waiting on God to give me some things, some deep things that are getting ready to happen. And I'm going to tell you something. That first opening, I said, is what you better pay attention to. We are in deep trouble with Satan coming and trying to steal our religion, our churches, our beliefs, your children, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend or girlfriend. He's trying to deceive everybody because he's on a journey, an end time journey to destroy and kill as many as he can before it's over with. He can't repent because there is no repentance to him. But you have an opportunity to repent. When you get mad at somebody and you say something or do something, that's the best time in the world to repent right then. Don't wait till that night. You might forget it. You might not wake up. Why should I repent? Because you don't want that dripping from your hands. You don't want that blood dripping. People used to say to me, why do you always preach about the end times? Because we're not living in the past, we're living what's coming. The future is at our doorstep. It goes on to say, verse 9, They shall run to and fro in the city, and they shall run upon the walls, and they shall climb upon the roofs, the house, and they shall enter in the windows like a thief, the earth shall shake or quake before them. The heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall turn to darkness or dark, and the stars shall withdraw its shining. Can you picture that? Can you imagine that happening? Can you imagine knowing that there's something coming that's going to try to destroy and get in your house? And then God's going to withdraw all these things that we see that we call beauty. And the Lord shall utter His voice before His army and for the camp and very great. For He is strong and He executeth His word for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and woe can come upon and who can abide. How can you abide in the day of trouble? The only way that you can abide is that you have to have this word deep down in your heart knowing that nothing is going to harm you. Can you imagine if you were set down on a sand beach and you had a hood over your head and they were going to cut your head off because of your faith or your belief? You know they're doing that right now? These are new converts that are getting saved. You've been saved for how many years? How many times have you been warned that the day of the Lord is at hand? I've heard that for years upon years upon years. But one day God woke me up and said, no, it's not. There are certain things that has to come to pass in order for that 
time to be here. There was no Sputnik. Did you know they lost a satellite in the, in the atmosphere? They've never found it, but they know it's still there. Did you know that they could not have, uh, no eye could see Jesus coming because they, the satellites weren't here, the cameras weren't here, the videos weren't here. A lot of these things that we are now developing in the end times for the knowledge of the truth shall increase before the day of the Lord and it's increasing right before your eyes. I went in to go get laser surgery on my right eye. It's still worse than what it was when I started. I don't know what they're doing. I got to go back and they're going to do this one. And then I got to drop all these stupid drops in my eyes for two weeks here and then go here and two weeks and two weeks more just to make them swelling go out of the eyes. But what I realized is while I was sitting in there, all the technology that they have just to examine the eye, how they can look inside behind your eyeball and see something there that I can't see on the front of the eye. And they got these devices, I guess you want to call them, machines, that they can do that. They can tell if there's a blur there. They can tell if there's a scar there. They can tell if whatever. Where did that knowledge come from? It had to be God. How did they make us a rocket to go into the moon? It had to be God give them the knowledge and the wisdom. How did they get the knowledge for these drones that they just fly over top of the city and they can monitor everything in the city? Did you know that they have something? I don't know what it's called, but it travels across the world every so many minutes or hour maybe. And it monitors the whole earth and it can tell if somebody has disturbed part of the earth and dug it up and buried a body. They, they have that. Everywhere you go, they are monitoring you. They know exactly where you're at at all times. You walk in a store, there's cameras on you. Go in the bank, there's many cameras on you. Stoplight, cameras on you. They're preparing the end time right before your eyes and you might not even see it. You might not realize why that all this is happening and you take it for granted. Oh no, yeah, I'm there. But it's all going to tie in to the mark of the beast. Trust me. Believe what I'm telling you. I told some people the other day, I said, you know what's getting ready to happen? I said, you know why they're going to put chips in everybody and they're going to make it sound good? And I started telling them, because if your child comes up missing, they'll be able to find them. A baby gets stole, they'll be able to find them. Your husband or your wife or your daughter or son in the service overseas, they'll be able to find them. They'll be able to track you down and they'll know everything about you. And I was sitting one day with Rudy Perez down in Lancaster at a freshest restaurant at that time. No, it's Shoney's, I'm sorry. And we were sitting there and all of a sudden God spoke to me and told me to get a pen and a piece of paper. And I didn't have one and so I asked the waitress and so she brings me over a pen and a paper. Rudy says, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I said, God just told me to get a pen and a paper. God said, write this down. He said, this is what you've got to be prepared for. He said, insurance, car insurance, life insurance, gasoline, electric gas. Started naming all these, about 13 different things that was going to be tied up into our livelihood, our being. And the mark of the beast was going to be controlling it. And then he said, everybody that takes the mark will be doomed. Read it for yourself. Revelations 13 chapter. Read it for yourself. This doesn't sound like a good message to preach your first day at a new church, but I can't help it. God told me to do it. And you know that you always have a door if you don't like it. We actually have two doors, three doors, four doors, and stay out of my office. So if I blow the trumpet and sound the alarm, 
It's up to you to get ready. It's up to you to prepare yourself for it. I could have a choir from one end of this place to the other, packed up against the wall, shouting, dancing, screaming, and hollering. And that doesn't mean that God's in it. Hello? It's what you get in the service, and when you leave with it, tells me that you got something out of it. Why do I need to tell people to prepare themselves for the Lord that's soon coming? I have to prepare myself, don't I? I fall short just like you do. I sin just like you do. And don't sit here and tell me you don't sin because you sin every day. Hello? You sit there and judge your brother or your sister. You sit there and talk about your neighbor. You fuss and cuss at each other. And you carry on and you wonder why God holds back your blessings. You wonder why God doesn't perform what He said He would do. He said, ask anything in my name and I'll do it. But you have to rightly divide that word, what that anything is. It don't mean that you can go out and get somebody else's husband or wife, does it? Anything that will not harm you is what I interpret that to mean. He said, first seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. How much seeking are you doing in the end times? Are you seeking to prepare yourself for battle? Do you know an armed force man or woman, they have certain things they have to put on to prepare to go to battle. They have to make sure they got enough grenades, their rifles clean, got enough bullets, got the right armor, the right protection, the right camouflage, the right boots, the right socks. They have to be ready for battle. You got to be ready for the battle that's coming. And I'm telling you, as God tells me, there is going to be the worst storm come and hit America because of the politics that's going on. You haven't seen nothing yet. Whether you want to believe it or whether you do not want to believe it. God put the man in power and he's exposing the, the swamp and the rats are coming out. There's more Christians today that are starting to believe that God has a man in power to help them get through these storms that we're going to face. I do know that we're going to have major, major, major earthquakes that's going to shake the world, not just a city or a town or a state. Storms are coming. I'm watching it now right before my eyes on the news that God gave me about six or seven years ago over on Williams Road to tell people to watch the storms. Why do we need to watch? Because that way you don't get caught with your pants down. Excuse my French. Why do I need to know God's voice? Because there's many voices in the land. There's many people trying to influence you. You would not believe how many people has tried to tell me what to do about getting a church. And all I can say is, God's got the one He wants me to have. And when I get it, you'll know. I don't know when, where, or how, but I'll get it. And I'm not going to build one. I ain't going through all those headaches, permits. I'll be standing there hustling and cussing and carrying on about it. I just want one. It's a turnkey operation. I go in, unlock the door, go in, hook up the sound and preach, and nobody there, I'll still have church. Amen. I can do that, you know. And the Lord shall utter His voice. That means He's going to talk to His people. Knowing God's voice means that you have to prepare for whatever He tells you to do. And if you go back in the Bible especially the Old Testament, there were things that these men, prophets and women, servants of the Lord, I don't know if that time they had prophecies. I don't know that, maybe. But whatever he told them to do, they acted upon it and done it. Amen. 
Go back to Abraham. He was promised he would be the father of many nations. At what age? He was almost a hundred. He heard God say, you're going to be the father of many nations. He couldn't even have a son at that time, could he? And then when he said, you're about to bear a son, your, his wife laughed. Then he had to go and prepare a sacrifice. Here's God telling you, you're going to have a son. You're going to be a father of many nations. Now you're going to take this promise and go up on a mountain and sacrifice the promise. But if you read that story with understanding, you'll understand the reason why he was told to do that was very simple. To see if he believed God more than he trusted in what he saw. And God prepared a lamb in the bush. There was two things that was done while they were there. Before they left, he said God would provide a what? Sacrifice. He prophesied it. The son asked him, where is the sacrifice? And as he got ready to stab him, there was a lamb in the bush. So you got to look into that stories that we read in the Bible, which are biblical stories that actually happened to give you honor and faith and trust in something that they did not see as well. until Jesus came on the scene, which was the New Testament. And they did exploits. And the Bible says, they that know God will do exploits. What do you want God to do for you in the year of 2020? Takes me back to the New Year's Eve of 19... When was that, um, the, the, the computers were supposed to clash? You know that day. I remember just like it happened last night. We went to a seafood place and had a service. Reverend Jenkins down in Greenboro, Circle Island. <laughs> Packed out. Rev is up there preaching and it was getting really close to that 12 o'clock when all the computers were supposed to clash. And something spoke to me and said, go tell that owner that when 12 o'clock hits, turn the lights out. <laughs> I heard that voice, I'm telling you, believe it or not. So I go over and I said, do me a favor. I said, in about a minute or two, I said, it's going to be the crash, go turn the lights out. And we did the countdown, 10, 9, 8. And when it hit that one and that, like that, he flipped them lights off. And I'm telling you what, you could not hear a peep. They were absolutely froze in their seat. And then he flipped the lights on. And Rev was laughing so hard because <laughs> he knew that I did that. And it was really funny because you, you realize something. If, if you know that something's coming and it happens just like it's supposed to happen, it can be very frightening. Especially if you know that somebody's about to die or something's getting ready, tragic is getting ready to happen or something good's getting ready to happen. Who do you think is giving you them impressions in your mind and talking to you and letting you know or pre-warning you? Hello? How big is your God? What can God can't do compared to what he can do? Number one, he can't break a promise. So if he's made a promise to you and I, then guess what? I'm going to stand on that promise. I was promised I was going to be a millionaire. But I can't tell you how much hell I've been through trying to get there. If I had knew it back then, I wouldn't have want that placed on my life. But the devil knows that when that happens, that I'm going to be a blessing to a lot of people. Blessings are given to you to bless other people. 
It's to help people that need, that you see and need. God gives you eyes to see. Kenny can't see, but you know what Kenny did? He still laid hands on a man and God healed him. <coughs> Excuse me. I know this for sure. That this year is going to be a major, 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 major change in God's ministry for me. I know that. I just turned to this one, Acts. This is the um, fifth chapter, 12th verse. Did you ever read in the Bible, in the book of Acts, where Ananias and Sapphira came before the Lord, sold his property and received whatever it was for the property? Ananias came and lied to the Holy Ghost. Now you know there wasn't anything standing in front of him like a Holy Ghost. It was Peter. But Peter was full of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And Peter said unto him, You have not lied unto me, but you have lied unto the Holy Ghost. And God struck him dead. I don't know if you read a little bit further, but they kept receiving offerings for hours. There was that many people. Several hours later, his wife shows up on the scene and lied as well, and she died, struck dead. I read also that where they were struck dead and worms ate them up. The book of Acts is so powerful that the Holy Ghost rules the church, or is supposed to. Instead of men and women and preachers getting up trying to, to dedicate themselves as somebody, it's him. I'll never forget that, that time we had service down there on Williams Road. And God told me to call people out. And I don't remember how many it was, 15, 10, whatever. But there was a bunch of them. And they stood right in front of me. And I said, it's not me, it's him. That, and I pointed up. How many was there and remember that? And God slayed every single one of them. Not one hand was put upon them except the hand of the Lord. And Mario's son was one of the most unbelieving guys there was. And God knocked him flat out on his back and he got back up and I said again, Lord, and down he went again. I remember that just like it happened yesterday. 